welcome back to Wade and Zola. Uh, today I thought I'd take you guys along to uh, transplant some of my uh, tomato seedlings I've got started. Now I'm a little bit late. I should have had this done a week ago, but things have just been crazy here. Bad weather, uh, dealing with all the Great Pyrenees puppies and getting that all sorted out. So today I thought I'd uh, give you guys uh, just a, a quick video of how I transplant my seedlings. Okay, you guys should be able to see this pretty good. Now they're a little bit bigger than what I would usually like <laughs> to be transplanting them, but uh, like I said, I'm a week behind, so I have to get them done today. Uh, this is my compost, or my, uh, uh, well it's compost and starting soil. Now when I transplant my plants, I put about an inch of soil in the bottom. Then I take these guys. Now these guys are pretty dry. Because I like my uh, plants to be dry once I uh, start to transplant them. So this one has two in it, so I'll save that one for another pot. Yeah, you guys can, can, I'm not sure how well you guys can see in there, but uh, that's pretty much what I do. Now this stuff is pretty moist all the way around. I'm going to try to get it down as best I can. As I pull off the two very bottom leaves, these are the starter leaves that came out when they first uh, germinated. I usually pull them off. Then I'll fill the plant right up to the next set of leaves. Now because of tomato plants, they will root all the way up the stem. If you fill it right up to the top two leaves, the rest of the stock will actually put out roots. The main reason you want them to put out more roots is because they're able to absorb more nutrients and stuff from the soil. So yeah, so that's pretty much how I do this. Well, I show you here. This one's just a smaller one. So what I'm actually going to do is pull this one off, this one off, those off, and those off. I just kind of pinched them off. So now I got the top portion. Now I'm going to put it in the pot. Right down to this part is where I'm actually going to put the soil. Now these plants, or these uh, uh, seedlings, are from my uh, three year old seeds. These are Roma tomatoes. So yeah, the seeds do last longer than a year. Now I'm doing, I'm transplanting down in the greenhouse, but because of the temperature outside, here in Canada at uh, this time of year, nighttime it still gets way too cold to be uh, uh, leaving them down in the greenhouse. So I have to uh, get them all transplanted and then I gotta bring them back to the house. I even got some pepper plants growing in this soil because I had some of my seeds got uh, kind of mixed together. Now because this tomato plant, see how it's forked? Well that was probably two seeds and now they're so intertwined. I don't want to take them apart because I'm afraid it would uh, damage your roots. So I'm just going to leave them together. Now they should grow fine. There shouldn't be any problems. Pull the bottom leaves off again. Now these all look a little wilted, like I said, is because I always leave my uh, uh, seedlings, I let them get a little dry before I transplant them again. It just makes it easier to get them out of the pots and uh, the soil don't usually fall off quite so easy. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. 
Now I do, well I'm going to do all of these today, but I have probably another 50 or 60 plants. But uh, uh, some of them didn't germinate very well and the plants didn't get very big or they're not quite big enough yet to transplant out into a new pot. So I didn't bother taking them, I only took the bigger ones. Like these guys are the ones that are going back into the greenhouse once it starts getting and staying above zero during the day and at night. Then my tomato plants can come back down into the greenhouse. Now these guys can handle a little bit of cold weather. Frost they cannot handle. Because if you if you grow vegetables in the north, you know tomatoes, as soon as frost hits them, that's it, they're done. They won't grow anymore, so I'm gonna fuck these bottom leaves off. Pull that one out. Pot. Potting soil. Now this is my potting soil. Uh, I got a video out there on how I do my potting soil. Yeah, so my Great Pyrenees have uh, taken up a great deal of my time in the last little while. So I've been pretty busy with the, the bad weather. Uh, I didn't bother doing a, a much of a video on planting. I did do uh, a small video on how I planted my tomatoes and why I used so many seeds because, like I said, they were old seeds. So I was hoping they'd germinate. And they actually did way better than I thought they were going to do. But now some of them didn't germinate, and that's because they were old seeds. But you still got a crop out of them. Now, like I say, I'm still pulling all the leaves off these plants. The bottom leaves, now not all of these. Just so I can bury it a little deeper inside the pot. Now last summer, my uh, harvest for my tomatoes was uh, really good. And I didn't have a lot of tomato plants in my greenhouse last year. I think I had uh, 15 tomato plants in that one bed. And I got about, oh, 50 pounds of tomatoes. And that's Roma tomatoes, they're a paste tomato. Um, that's something else I wanted to, to, to hit the topic on just a, a little bit while I'm doing this. Uh, I'll raise it up so I'm actually talking to you guys and not just talking to uh, the world by itself. Uh, it's about, uh, I guess uh, some people call it prepping. Uh, you know, I've been a pretty much a prepper all my life. Uh, I'm no doomsday prepper by any stretch of the imagination. I'm realistic. I don't try and preach doom and gloom to anybody but I'm a strong believer in being prepared because we never know what's going to happen from one day to the next especially in this world we live in now it's absolutely crazy things are gone wacky in my opinion so yeah uh, so yeah like I, like I said I believe everybody should be prepared I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to get prepared for. You should be prepared for. Well, I mean, anything that, wherever you live, that's a, uh, uh, things that could happen. Like, every place is a little different. If you live in a, a dry, arid area, then you need to prep water. You know, that's like, uh, you know, that's just common sense. But you'd be amazed at how many people don't prep anything. Nothing. They buy their food. For one day. Like they couldn't go a week without going to a grocery store to buy food. Or not have any knowledge of being able to grow a plant or any plant. Uh, I mean I can understand that to a certain degree. Well not really because I mean I've always been growing stuff even when I didn't have a homestead. I always 
I worked uh, a lot of hours, so I really couldn't own a homestead at the time. But I did have all my gardens and all those things. I always grew those. Those were my uh, stress relievers <laughs> from when I ran my own business. That's what I would do after working all day. That's what I used to do, uh, was my gardens, my lawns, my flower beds. I've always had a little bit of a, a green thumb, but once I started homesteading, I really got into gardening and growing food. And... Like for me, it doesn't matter what you grow, just grow something. Get your hands dirty, learn how to do something for yourself, uh, especially when it comes to growing food. Uh, it's very, very, very important now with uh, the way the world is, is so unstable. We don't know what's going to happen from day to day. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't believe anything's going to happen, and I hope you're right. But I don't know. I can't really say what's going to happen. Now, there's an awful lot of fear mongers on YouTube now, and I don't watch them anymore. Because uh, I, I don't believe... Anybody should be scaring people into trying to become uh, prepared or like for me uh, when people call you a prepper I mean I don't mind being called a prepper that's fine with me I mean I, I prep period but that's that's something you do uh, a prepper is prepared I think a, a prepared is a much better word uh, we prepare for things that could happen, but you hope that won't happen. Like, I'm fortunate because here in Canada, I can grow my food year-round if I have to. Uh, most people can't do that. But, uh, like, even if you don't, you can't grow anything right now, you can always go and buy your produce in a, a grocery store if you had to. Or try and get to a farmer's market and get organic food. And you can bring it home and bottle it, preserve it. And if you don't know how to do that, there is tons and tons and tons of videos online showing people how to can and preserve food. Now, water bathing food is very simple. You don't need any special equipment or anything at all. Uh, canning meat, you do need a uh, pressure canner. Uh, that's something that's important. Alright, so if you got anything out of the video, maybe consider subscribing. Smash that like button and hit that subscribe button so you don't uh, miss any of my upcoming videos. And thanks for watching.